Good day and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Atro Francis the Bank. If you are stopping by for the first time, I would advise you press the subscription button, um, like the video, and also activate the notification bell so that anytime I upload, probably you're going to get it and you'll be informed in the process. So it's a pleasure to be with you again. Today, we're going to be dealing with Graham's Law of Diffusion. Um, in 1833, an English chemist, Graham, carried out a research to find out that, um, truly, gases that are less dense have a rate, they diffuse faster than those that are denser. So, in his conclusions, he came forward with a law that a constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of a gas, is inversely proportional to the square root of its vapor density. Now, what was diffusion? The process by which gases move from a more concentrated or dense medium to a less dense medium, and as such, it's been um, transferred throughout the medium. For example, if I should um, use my perfume right now, at this point where I am of the room, yeah, it's where the concentration of the perfume is higher. But within a short time, somebody at the other end of the room will be able to perceive it, which is the movement of that um, perfume from a denser region or a more concentrated region to a less dense region, but it's been sent throughout the room. So we're going to check out the calculation or the, the formula principle of um, diffusion, which Graham's put forward. So he said the rate The rate at which gas diffuses is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. Now, if I have to, say, remove this to bring the equality sign, that would be k, one times one, uh, k times 1 is that, over the density. So this is what um, Graham has been, is trying to explain to us that when the rate or when the gas is denser, the rate of diffusion will be lesser, inversely. So when the rate is higher, means the uh, density of the gas is lower. That's all. But in the scenario where we are having two gases, so if this is it, okay, where we are having two gases. So in this case, we are we're going to be having R1, since we are having two gases now, R1 over R2 will be, is equal to the density of D2 and D1. This is for uh, the first gas, the rate of diffusion for the first gas, the rate of diffusion for the second gas, and so on and so forth. You should always remember that this is in the cross multiplicational form, Rd. So R1 to its D1, R2 to its D2, that's the case, the chemistry is. So, we also remember that relative molecular mass is equal to 2 times the vapor density, alright? So if that is true, I can equally say this is equal to um, the M2, the relative molecular mass, or M1. This is how we go. We're going to make use of this elaborately. And it is pertinent that we don't forget another formula, the rate, let's call it R1 of gas 1, will be equals to V1, okay, let's just call it rate is equal to V over T. Okay, so if we are dealing with two gases, therefore we say R1 will be V1 over T1 and R2 will be V2 over T2. So, this can be substituted in a place where we see our R. Okay, if for eventual the question encompasses that. So, let us take Maybe one question first of all to see what we have. Mm -hmm. 
with first question. If 280 cm cube of hydrogen diffuses in 40 seconds, how long will it take for 490 cm cube of a gas X? So we're having two gases here, hydrogen gas and gas X, which is the unknown gas, whose vapor density is 25. They're giving us the vapor density to diffuse under the same conditions. So let us begin by bringing out the given. This is given to us. So we have, we have hydrogen. This is hydrogen gas and it's formed. And the other gas is X, unknown. If, so I'll call this V1 because hydrogen is the first gas. The volume is given to be 280 for hydrogen. So that's V1. So here will be what? V2. Okay. If 280 cm cube of hydrogen diffuses in 40 seconds. So there is also time. T1 is 40 seconds. Okay. How long? They are asking us. Um, okay, this is 490. 490 cm cube. How long? T2 is what we don't know. They are asking us of the time. How long will it take 490 cm cube of a gas X, okay, whose vapor density is 25 to diffuse under the same conditions? Now, the vapor density, let's call it the density of this gas is 25 of gas X. Now, we know too well that um, relative molecular mass of a gas is two times its vapor density. Okay, so let's say the M2, this will be M2, but in the question they give us relative molecular mass of hydrogen to be 2. So this is M1 is 2. So now here, M, the relative molecular mass will be 2 times 25, which is 50. Call it GMO or something. I don't know if I am communicating. Now, this is what we can get from the question before we can start solving. Remember, we have various formulas. So now let's see how we're going to resolve this. So I say I have my R1 for the first gas, R2 for the unknown, is equals to, I'm going to use this other formula, M2 over M1. Because I've been able to, they're giving the relative molecular mass of this, and I'm able to get this other one because I remember the formula that says relative molecular mass is 2 times its vapor density. Therefore, 2 times the 25 which has been given to me will give me 50. So I move on. So if this is the case, hmm, I'm trying to see if I can shift this thing a little bit so that I can make good use of that side. Okay, okay, okay. If this is the case, let me put those variables here. V2, V2 is 490 cm cube. T2 is what I'm looking for. N2 is 50. I think that is fine. That is for X. Okay, from here, because volume is given and time is also given. So I have to use this. R1 is the same thing as V1 over T1 divide by R2, which is V2 over T2, which is equals to M2 over M1. Now, if I cross over here, okay, let me take this out. V1 over V1 over T1 times fraction says in the laws of fraction that when you change this to a multiplication sign, the position of these variables will change. This will go up and this will come down. So both mass. So now I have T2 over V2. All of this is equal to M2 over M1. 
Okay, now I want to substitute the variables inside. V1 is 280, T1 is 40 seconds, times T2, which we're looking for. Okay, yeah. Then V2 is 490. This is equals to the root of M2 is 50, M1 is 2. So, 280 times this, I have 280 T2 over 40 times 490. 490 is 1,600. 19,600. This is equals to the root of 25. 50 divided by 2 give me 25. So let's see. Okay, let me take out this one, one out. I have 28t over 1960 is equals to 5. The square root of 25 is 5. So I'm going to cross multiply. Alright, 28t times 1 is 28t. This is 1960 times 5. 1960 times 5 is 9800. 9800. Now divide both sides by 28. 28. 28. This will go at my t2. Where do I start writing my 2? My T2 will be 9800 divided by 28, and that will give me 350. 350 seconds. So, from the question, they say how long will it take? So, it takes 350 seconds to achieve that. Okay, it is important if we don't forget that um, rate is also V over T, the volume time over time. If we don't remember that, we find it difficult to be able to bring out the combinations and all that. But let's solve more questions so that in case we do not understand very, very well, the whole picture will become clearer as we proceed further. Now, question number two. Please, let me take this up. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, remember that is law, what the law says, Gram's law of life is that the temperature and pressure remain constant before it can be obeyed. Um, hydrogen diffuses eight times, okay? There are two gases, this is hydrogen. Diffuses eight times, okay. What is it? Eight times as fast as fast as a gas, what? So we have two gases, um, hydrogen and gas, what? Now, the rate at which hydrogen diffuses is eight times. So let's call this our R1 is eight. Our R2, okay, is one. Because it's eight times that. Okay, now let's move on. It, calculate the relative molecular mass of Y. Relative molecular mass of hydrogen is 2. They have given it to us. So, M1 is 2. M2 is what they are asking us to get. It's unknown. So, um, I think this is more straightforward, I think. Now, we have the formula says R1 over R2 is equal to the related molecular mass of M2 over that of M1. R2 is 8. Sorry, sorry, sorry. R1. R1 is 8. Okay, I'm correct. It's 8. R2 is 1. And this is equal to the root of M2. It's an unknown. Let's call it X over um, the M1, M1 here is 2. By cross multiplication, I have my root x 
is equals to 8 root 2. Now, in indices, we've been told that when we remove the root of x, in order for us to remove the root of x, we have to square both sides. Okay, square both sides by, okay, just square both sides. And when we do that, this will be gone. So, how do we do that? So, this is the root of x squared is equal to 8 root 2 squared. If I cross over to this other side, the square of this is x. Give us x. And this becomes 8 squared times 2. X is think, 64 times 2, and my X is 30. Okay? Times 2, 128. 128. That is the relative molecular mass of the unknown. What? It's 128. Okay, that aside, and let me explain this, okay? Why do we square this and this is up? So, square root is the same thing as 1 over 2 in indices. So if this is x, here become, if this is x is inside, here become x raised to the power 1 over 2. That, that's what it means. So if these two things are the same, and we say we should square both sides, which is this square, like I squared here, okay? When I squared here, I got x alone. So if this root sign is the same thing as 1 over 2, therefore, how do we get rid of this? So Power's law of indices says that when a number x is raised to a certain power, which is again raised to another power, this number x is said to be in powers, that the powers are multiplied together for final evaluation. So therefore I have, this is my x raised to power, 1 over 2 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2, so this is, 1 times 2 is 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 here gives us 1. So that x raised to power 1 is x. That is how we have, when we did this, we now have x. So this is um, an explanation from voice I mean, how they call it, indices. Let's take another question, please. Question 3. 80 cm cube of chlorine gas. So I have my first fire chlorine. Chlorine gas is often CO2. Yeah. Let's say 80 cm, so this is my first gas, so it's V1 is 80 cm cube. That uses through a porous spot in 60 seconds. T1, 60 seconds. For the same volume of an unknown gas to that is through the same port, the unknown gas, let's call it X. For the same volume, so V2 is also 80 cm cube. Okay, we should calculate the relative molecular mass of the unknown gas. Um, 90, okay, sorry, it seems I skipped something. You say 80 cm of chlorine gas that uses through a porous spot in 60 seconds. Okay, I have that. Why it takes 90 seconds, sorry, T2 is 90 seconds. Why it takes 90 seconds for the same volume of an unknown gas to that is through the same pore, calculate the relative molecular mass of unknown gas. M2 is what we're looking for. Yeah, M2. We know the relative molecular mass of chlorine itself is 35.5. This is M1. 35.5. But chlorine gas contains 2 in it. 
So times two, which is equals to 71. So we are to get our M2 if M1 is 71. All right, let's start. We have R1 over R2 is equals to the root of M2 over the root of M1. R1 is the same thing as B1 over T1 divided by R2 is B2 over T2 which is equal to the root of M2 over M1. <clears throat> B1 over T1 times T2 over V2 is equal to the root of M2 over M1. Okay, let's cross over here. V1 is 80. T1 is 60. Times T2. T2 is 90. Over V2, which is also 80. This is equal to... M2 is unknown. And um, M1, M1, M1 is 71. This will go with this. So we have 90 over 60 is equals to um, the root of M2 over the root of 71. I want to make this a subject. So I have 60 root. M2 is equal to 90 root 71. I divide both sides by 60. So this will go, I have root M2 yep, is equal to 90 over 60 root 71. Let's come over here. Now, 90 over 60 is 19 divided by 60 is 1.5. So I have root M2 is equal to 1.5 root 71. I'll take out these roots. So I square both sides. Square both sides. So here become M2 is equal to 1.5 square is 2.25 times 71 because 71, the root of 71 is 71 okay, we illustrated that earlier on so, I have my M2 is equal to 2.25 times 71 times 71 is 159.75. 159.75. M2 becomes 159,160. Relative molecular mass is GMO, but let's say that's all we have. So, again, there we go. We must have a formal knowledge of. Um, indices, in short, for us to be able to excel properly in this topic, we must have our formal knowledge of mathematics. Because when we deal with um, fractions in here, and we also deal with indices elaborately. So if you do not understand indices, and equally change your subject or formula, that's about three topics in mathematics. With time, probably I'm going to have lectures on them, but uh, for the time being, this is what it is. So if you for you to be able to go through this topic very well, I would advise you can go back to do um, some revision on those topics. It will really help you to understand exactly what we're dealing with. So that's our third question. Let's take the fourth question. All right. The fourth question here says, it takes four seconds for hydrogen to diffuse from one end of a gas jar to another. It takes four seconds. 
So let's take with hydrogen. So this is my gas hydrogen. T1 is 4 seconds. Okay, from one end to another. How long will it take oxygen? This is oxygen. Um, so T2. Now, the okay. question says, how long will it take oxygen to diffuse through the same distance? Now, how long will it take gas the T2? Now, let's look at the relative molecular mass of hydrogen. Um, M2, M1, sorry, is 2, because this is hydrogen gas, the relative molecular mass of this is 2. And that of oxygen, this is oxygen gas, which is 16 times 2, uh, M2 would be 32. Yeah. So, they did not give us the, how do I call it, the volume or thereabout, but we know that this reaction takes place under the same condition of temperature and pressure, so which means the volume here doesn't change it. So in order for us to go through it, this is what we do. We have our normal uh, rate, R1 over R2 is equal to the root of M2 over the root of M1. So R1 is V1 over T1 divided by V2 over T2. This is equal to the root of M2 over the root of M1. So if I change this, V1 over T1 times T2 over V2 is equal to the root of M2 over the, over the root of M1. So this will go with this, obviously, and I will be having T2 over T1 is equal to the root of M2 over the root of M1. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for T2. Now, let's substitute the variables inside. So I have my T2 over, which I'm looking for, T1, where are you? T1 is 4. This is equal to the root of M2. M2 is 32 over the root of uh, M1, which is 2. So this is the same thing as T2 over 4 is equal to the root of 32 over 2. Um, the topic is solved in mathematics. Root 32 divided by root 2 is the same thing as the root of 32 over 2. That is math. So let's proceed. Now, this is T2 over 4 is equal to 32 divided by 2 is the root of 16. And um, let me cross again. T2 over 4 over 4 is equal to the root of 16 is 4. So this is 4 by 1. By cross multiplication, T2 times 1 is T2, and 4 times 4 is 16. So it takes, when it takes 4 seconds, when it takes 4 seconds for hydrogen to diffuse, it takes 16 seconds for oxygen. So that is that. Let us take our fifth question. If 100 cm cube of methane, so the first gas is methane, CH4, is a uh, relative molecular mass, I mean the molecular formula. So, our V1 is 100 cm cube. If it takes 100 cm cube of methane uh, to diffuse through a porous spot in 1.0 seconds, so T1 is 1.0 seconds. Now, how long will it take the same volume of sulfur, so, um, of what? Of sulfur 4 oxide, which is uh, SO2, the same volume, so V2 is also 100 cm cube. How long is T2, that's what they are asking us, will it take that? So for four oxide to diffuse through the same port under the same conditions, um, they've given us the relative molecular mass of hydrogen, 
oxygen carbon to be 12, oxygen 16 and sulfur is 32. So let us begin. Now, by M1, the relative molecular mass of this, carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 4, I mean sorry, hydrogen is 4, 12 plus 4 is 16. Now, my M2, sulfur is 32 plus oxygen is 16 times 2, 32, 2. 32 plus 32 is 64. So, let us proceed. So if that is true, following our formula written on diaphragm, R1 over R2 is equal to the root of M2 over the root of M1. R1, which is the same thing as V1 over T1, divided by V2 over T2, is equal to the root of M2 over M1. So my V1 over T1 times T2 over V2, oh yeah, is equal to the root of M2 over M1. Let's move over. Volume being equal, 100, 100, I can probably strike them out because it will still go. So I have T2 over T1. So T2 over T1 is equal to M2 here is 64 over M1 is uh, 16. So and uh, T1 is 1. So let me just put it here, 1.0. So I have T2 over 1 is equals to, let's look at this, 64 divided by 16. Is it necessary? 64 divided by 16 is 4. Okay, so this is 4, so I have the root of 4 here. Now, cross multiplication, this is over 1, T2. Is equal to 1 times root 4, which is root 4. So my T2 is equal to 2 seconds. Because the root of 4 is um, 2. Let's look at the 6. 